Hi everyone and welcome to the second part of this Substance Designer 5 tutorial uh, which is uh, about cre the creation of a shape to height node. Uh, so in case you haven't seen the first part, I invite you to click on the link that should appear on the link below. Uh, this is necessary if you want to follow this one. Um, the second part is actually completely optional and, and is more about optimization of, of this graph on, on uh, somehow simplification. So let's start. So. Basically, what we did in the first video is uh, making this this graph, which basically will take um, a shape as a, as input like this, and process it in order to to output a height map. So something like this. So basically, right now, if you go here and sorry, and this one, and draw whatever shape, like something like this. What it what it does it take the the highest point here and it will it will generate the the height map from from this. So first thing, as you can see, there is some artifacts here. Um, so at, at the beginning, I thought that was it was because my my graph wasn't in uh, 16 bits, but actually it is in 16 bits. I change it, and you see that you still have that. And I managed to isolate the issue, which is basically here in the normal map. So basically, it's just the normal map that gives this artifact for some reason. Uh, so a way to fix that is, uh, in our case at least, is to use um, directional blur that will diminish the effect. So if I do this and this, it's too much of course, but you see if I put to zero, you can diminish that a bit. So first thing, and another thing that you can do if you want to give a bit more strength to your height map is here, you can add an auto level. And now you have something a bit stronger. I will diminish that once again. So, like this, you are sure that you are using that. If you find it too strong, you can also go in the scale here and diminish like this. But at least here you are sure to use all the, the values that are at your disposal. Another thing that I want to to simplify actually it's last time as as I say I, I used the pixel processor to, to 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 make the conversion. Basically what I wanted to do is to take the highest point for each column and uh, to to give a, a corresponding uh, value here and it works well, no problem with that, but actually I saw a comment in a in the video um, that gave me a way simpler solution, so maybe I was a bit too much used to use to use pixel processor. But basically, what you can do is just use a linear gradient, the one here, a blend node, and if I'm not wrong, I just do that. And that's it. You see, I use the li gradient, gradient linear as a, as a mask. And then I just plug the, the shape here. And it gives exactly the same result, as you can see here, if I display both. So I was a bit stupid. <laughs> I, I don't know why. As I say, sometimes the, the solution is obvi obvious and we we... Uh, forget it. So, just going to use that. Actually, my pixel processor seems a bit faster, but it's not that much. So, first thing, why making things complicated? What we can do simple. Second thing, it's um, um, Nicolas Vierman gave me uh, just a trick uh, about the FX map. The thing is, as you see right now, it's cost kind of a lot. And it's because actually the more pattern you are generating in the FX map, uh, the the more costly it will be. So what we'll try to do is instead 
here what I did, if you remember, I say okay, generate as much patterns as there is pixel in the in the uh, the the height of the of the of the FX map. So what we can do is try to see if we uh, if it's not possible to generate some of these patterns before to use the FX maps, and actually we can. So what we are going to do is use this and duplicate this pattern with multiple times with different transform nodes and blend nodes. So what you do here, we'll use um, a transform node like this. And what we'll do, we'll do an offset, a vertical offset of 50%. Like that, and I will need some space, so 50%, half of it. And with the blend node that we set to max, just to make sure, we are going to use these two. And once again, why, why do you, we use mask? Because if you remember, what we want to keep, to always keep, is the the maximum value to make sure that it's reflecting in, it's kept in the height map. So now that we have done that, we duplicate it with Control D. We are going to relink a bit. We are going to place this in the transform 2D and that here. And now we are going to, here we did an offset of 0 0.5, here we are going to do an offset of half of half, so which means half of 0 0.5, which means 0 0.25. And if you look here, now you have duplicated the pattern. What I'm going to do is to simplify a bit here in this VGNet, so it's, we know what Okay, so I'll take this up. I will move this if I can, like that. Okay, so right now we know what we have. So if we look here, we have two shapes, one here and one here. And here now we have four shapes. Good. So let's make some space. And what we want to do now is we are going to use 16 shapes. So. 2, 4, 8, 16. So what I do is I duplicate this again, like that, place it here. And once again, this will go here, and this will go here. And here it's 0 0.5, 0 0.25, so it's 0 0.125. And here it will be zero point zero six twenty five. So each time, as I told you, we have half of the previous value. So let's check that zero point five, zero point twenty five, zero point one twenty five, and zero. 0 0.0625, which means that here we have almost covered everything and we have 16 values. So that's what we are going to plug here. So <clears throat> here it doesn't change anything because of course it covers all the height, but the thing is we are still generating iteration. If we go in here, we are still generating uh the amount of pixels we have in the the y axis so what we're going to do here is just divide so division by 16 so we need a float and actually uh, let me think about that
to integer it actually is that that we have to do by things to so we want an integer and we set this as output node and let's see now should be enough so we see that we cover everything and I think that's it we are good with that and you see that if you remember it was something like uh, between 50 to 60 milliseconds and right now it's one from uh, let's say two milliseconds so we divide Almost, let's say by 16 the, the the time that we need to do this this map so that's it uh, I hope it has been useful as I said it was this one is completely optional it's just how to optimize uh, the lesson to learn here is to remember that if you can reduce the the number of patterns that you draw in an affix map you will uh, also uh, improve the performance of that so I hope this video has been useful for you. Um, if you have any questions, don't hesitate, hesitate to add them in the comment. Uh, thanks again for watching.